we are glad that you are in with us right here on Entertainment Thursday. Good morning, Kenya. And remember, Aria, uh, Alia, weh, weh. okay, that, but that one. <laughs> My ancestors have agreed. Lazima ujulikani umetoka wapi. Anyway, remember earlier on I had promised that we'll be having an amputee fashion show. Yes, and did I also mention that it is the first of its kind right here in the 254. And I am more than pleased to have some of the people behind this particular fashion show. That is the Mr. and Miss Prothea Amputee Fashion Show. And uh, joining us, beginning from my far right, is a Brian Masiali. And he is the Strategy and Business Development Manager, Prothea Kenya. And uh, right next to him, we have... Um, Belinda Adhiambo. Belinda Adhiambo is the community outreach manager and also the current face of Mr. and Miss Amputee Kenya. And on my immediate right, we have Dr. Nick Were, and he is the co director, Prothea Kenya. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We are pleased to have you here. If we can just begin with, uh, with you, um, Mr. Core Director, that is Dr. <laughs> Nick. Kindly tell us about um, Prothea Amputee. Yes, uh, so uh, Prothea Kenya is actually the first company that has leveraged 3D printing to make prosthetic devices. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, they were made with some long uh, methods, and now we have been able to shorten it, make it more affordable, but also durable and high quality. Mm -hmm. So the fashion show is basically to spread the message that we have amputees who need these devices, and they are available the, uh, locally and affordably. Mm -hmm. um, I have so many stories, uh, one being that there are people who get amputated and live many years on crutches, some with these big sticks. Mm. You see them on the road asking for money, and it really heartens me that there are devices that can actually get these people to be incorporated back to the society, back to what they were doing, back to their jobs. And uh, this fashion show is basically to give them that confidence, come and see models strutting along the runway, mm -hmm. cheer them on, and just propagate the message that disability is not an ability. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And um, Madam Belinda right here, I can see she has a prosthetic leg. Maybe if you don't mind, do you, uh, would you wish to tell us your story? Uh, okay, so uh, my name is Belinda, yes, and um, I was born with two limbs like any other. Mm -hmm. At the age of three, I was involved in a road accident. I ended up getting amputation. And uh, since then, I think life has never been the same because uh, the main reason I'm saying I think is because uh, I've grown up without a leg. Like, I don't know that life of having a leg. Remember, mm -hmm. I got amputated at the age of three. Mm -hmm. So I've grown up uh, changing prosthetics here and there, here and there. It hasn't been a that easy because uh, these prosthetics are expensive. Mm. The one that is uh, easy to access is uh, heavy. Like, it's... It's heavy and it has so many challenges on its own way. So I went to school uh, like any other kid, but it wasn't easy in high school. In primary, I think it was okay because the teacher used to kind of the other kids mm -hmm. when they tried to mock me. But in high school, the stigma was just open, apart from a few friends that I had. Mm -hmm. So my life was just uh, full of challenges, but uh, because I was raised up like any other child. I remember there is a day I told my mom, like, uh, I'm disabled. And because she was punishing me, and she was like, who told you are disabled? Mm -hmm. Then you'll yeah. A disabled person is a person born like that. You are not born like this. So don't talk about, about disability in this house. Mm -hmm. So I have four brothers. I'm the only daughter. So that tells you there is more love on my end. So despite being disabled, at least I'm getting that parental love, and mm -hmm. uh, my brothers are always there to support me. In high school, it wasn't that easy because of the stigma and everything. Yeah. But I'm glad that every school that I joined, they were able to adjust to my disability and accommodate me, like making rams, uh, making accessible washrooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody was just willing to adjust to my, to my uh, accommodation, which was a good thing. Then I went to campus. Then now I came out to this life to struggle. I did journalism and mass communication. 
So, so I'm, a, I'm a journalist and a communication person by profession. Mm -hmm. But getting a job was not easy because you go looking for a job and they tell you, Tukikutuma news na yomgu yako, utarudi. Oh. So it wasn't that easy. Yeah. But all in all, I thought of, because I'm going through this challenge, why can't I now do something for people like me? People who have gone through this and are not mm -hmm. able to speak up. Mm -hmm. So I went into advocacy. I've been advocating for disability rights. Uh, sensitization of uh, education, the importance of education on the disability side. Mm -hmm. I've also been talking about uh, sexual and reproductive health for women and girls with disability. Mm -hmm. Why sexual? Because people assume that uh, in, in this general world, if you're a man with disability and you marry a, a, a lady without a disability, the society will be, yeah, I'm a letter to mm -hmm. But if you are a, a man without a disability, you marry a woman with disability. With disability. But I say, oh, yeah. So it's always a struggle here and there. Mm -hmm. So uh, the main reason now because of why we're having the Mr. and Miss Amputee is because I feel amputation is not seen as a disability. I remember when I was at the, at the entrance, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the guy at the reception. Mm -hmm. We met, we just talked, we clicked like I'm a social person. So we just started talking and when we were coming, he was like, so why are you here? I'm like, we are going to do a fashion show for Mr. and Miss Amputee. Mm -hmm. And she was like, he was like, what is that? Then I'm like, oh, for people with the leg like mine, like I was showing. Then like, ah, I didn't realize you have a yeah. prosthetic. Yeah. So <laughs> I think it's something most of the people are not aware. They only see wheelchair, crutches, mm. walking aids as disability. But yeah. for amputation, it's not that visible to the society. Mm. The other thing is because we want to bring these people to the limelight. How many people have gone through amputation and are hiding? Mm. Because now the society has decided to see the other side of them. Mm. So many. Mm -hmm. How many people are not able to access these prosthetic devices? Mm -hmm. So many. Putting in mind I was raised in Kibra. You know the challenge with the environment and everything. Getting a prosthetic, a good prosthetic like mine is costly. Yeah. So what did I do? I had to do a fundraising and I had to call friends to chip in. Mm -hmm. How many people say they don't have friends who can contribute even that 10,000 for them to get a prosthetic? Yeah. So the aim of the fashion show is to create more awareness, raise money to ensure that we have people bouncing back to their normal life like the way I have mm -hmm. and also encouraging them that uh, disability is not inability. If I can do it, why can't you come out and do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Thank love that. You. Thank you so much, Belinda. You are truly the face, you know, <laughs> and you're speaking for them very passionately. Thank I can tell you. that you're a journalist. Now to you, Brian, why is this important to you? Yes, uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, first of all, I work as a head of strategy and business development mm -hmm. at Prothea Kenya. And uh, why this is important to us and personally to me, it's because of the transformation of how uh, we can be able to dynamically change the lives of people. Mm -hmm. We have an issue in Kenya whereby uh, lots of people do not know about um, prosthetics. And uh, it's not even about the uh, aspect of them not knowing about prosthetics, it's about affordability. So when we have an issue with affordability, then the accessibility becomes an issue mm -hmm. as well. So as Prothea Kenya, we were able to come in between so that we're able to manufacture affordable, uh, durable on, and comfortable prosthetics mm -hmm. that are able now to tailor to these people who are not uh, able to afford uh, the prosthetics. And uh, with this event, the Mr. and Ms. Amputee, Kenya, we are able now to distribute this message that uh, we are here and uh, every person, uh, once you lose a limb, it's not the end of life, mm -hmm. it's not the end of your social uh, economic and uh, uh, career per se. Uh, so you are able to bounce back to uh, normality as uh, my colleague uh, Belinda has said. Uh, we advocate uh, for that uh, aspect whereby people are able to be themselves, people are able to live life like an able person mm -hmm. and uh, we don't want to have that feeling of stigma mm -hmm. and that feeling of being a burden to society. Yeah, yes. and I love that. I love this initiative for sure. It's fashion with a purpose. Mm -hmm. So probably m maybe to you, Doc, um, if you can just break it down uh, for us, you know, in your medical terms, but you know in, in simpler terms that we can understand maybe yes. what you know when does it get to a point where you decide as doctors we need to amputate this person all right <clears throat> uh, that's a very good question uh, there are several reasons uh, why we amputate mm. and uh, locally 
the major uh, cause for amputations, which is actually a life-saving procedure, um, is uh, trauma, uh, basically like in an accident. With all these border borders around, we get border border accidents daily, especially at the facility I work in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you can fix it because uh, the bone is not too um, fractured and uh, the soft tissues are okay and you can be able to treat it. But sometimes uh, uh, some patients get very mangled uh, extremities, meaning that uh, it's not able to be reconstructed and the best care for them at the point is an amputation, uh, actually to save a life because with these mangled extremities you end up bleeding a lot and you can go into shock and uh, possibly lose your life. Mm -hmm. So an amputation is a life-saving uh, uh, intervention uh, by the doctors. Other causes include diabetes uh, with the diabetic foot, there's peripheral vascular disease, which is basically a clot uh, in the arteries that uh, reduces the blood supply to the periphery of your foot, uh, and leading to the foot actually dying. And you know we need to cut up because anything that is dead uh, in your body is very dangerous to your organs. Mm -hmm. And then we also have cancer, which is also a very common cause, especially in children. Uh, we amputate uh, the children uh, with cancer. And you know, this is basically, they need to really integrate back into society uh, and get uh, moving with the prosthetic devices. So these are some of the reasons. And uh, as I said, uh, the awareness is really lacking. There's a lot of work we need to do. Uh, if you look at uh, our country, Kenya, uh, there are studies that have been done and they show that 79% of amputees uh, in Kenya lack access to prosthetic devices mm -hmm. and it's for a number of reasons sometimes you know it's uh, sometimes they don't even know that the prosthetics are available and uh, the cost uh, currently uh, uh, NHIF and the uh, many insurance companies do not cover for, pros for prosthetic devices mm -hmm. and for us as doctors we want to bring you back uh, to the health that you once had and health is not just physical, it's mental, it's emotional, it's spiritual, you know. And once you amputate someone, getting the prosthetic for me is at least will get them to the best health that they can be able to get because they can be able to fend for themselves, for their families. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's why I feel it's very important for their awareness and just for them to be able to access these devices. Mm -hmm. So this also a call to insurance companies. Pay attention to amputees and pay attention to providing prosthetic devices. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, uh, Belinda, um, maybe to someone, for someone who's um, been amputated or rather was amputated a bit later on in their lives you know for you you were amputated at age three so you kind of grew into it yeah. you know you don't remember a life with with the with a leg, with, with, with a leg you yeah. know with your other leg so for someone who got amputated later on in life they were already used to having legs they actually maybe were in a field where you know, they needed to do things with their, like maybe they were models, you know, they were models and it's the strutting mm -hmm. that pays you, you know. So for someone who got amputated at later on in life, like how do you go about, you know, just speaking to them to maintain their confidence or to have that confidence back and to preach resilience to them? Uh, so basically, it's a, it's a challenge, especially for someone who has gone through amputation at an older age, mm. because adjusting to the prosthetic life is not that easy, that one can assure you. Mm. When, uh, when we, like in our office, we do have clients walking in, and uh, there is this scenario that uh, there is a client who walked in, and he was stressed up, he was just a Gen Z, like, mm. I don't know what happened, but he was a Gen Z. Mm -hmm. So he's there, he's holding his chin, because he feels like it's not going to be the same again. So in the process, he's asking, like, will I be able to walk again with this leg? Is it comfortable? You see, I'm talking to him, and I'm mm. seated on my desk. So oh, when I'm seated, see. you can't tell yeah. if I'm an amputee. Yeah. Mm. So we're just conversing. Then I was like, what if you get the leg, and tomorrow you wake up running? So he's like, ah, is it possible? So we, we do have like uh, those uh, mental health conversations. Like, I don't tell you uh, directly, like, hey, I'm counseling you. No, mm -hmm. but we have the, the conversation on how to 
jump from the life of having a leg to the life of having a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. Then in the process when we were talking, I, something happened in our kitchen, so I was like, let me go and check. Then when I was working, I was like, ah, all along I've been talking to you and you also have a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, so I'm telling you it's okay. So I'm using myself as an example to people who walk into our office mm -hmm. to give them hope there is life. You can work. You can move from one place to another. Mm -hmm. You can make friends. You can socialize. It just depends with the mindset of the people around you. And this is what I always tell them. Be you. The world will adjust. If today I start coming in in Agunia, people will talk today. But if I come in tomorrow, they will get used we'll to get me used wearing to the Agunia. Yeah. So the, the human being is built in a different way. They will always adjust to something that comes. If you just introduce yourself the way you want them to know you, that is what they will know you. Mm -hmm. So most of the time I use myself as an example and that is why I, I thought of being the face of the Mr. and Miss Amputee because I'm not afraid to show my prosthetic. Many people have prosthetic but it's covered in a, in a form like it looks like a leg. Yeah. But look at mine, it's yeah. a metal. Like I want you to learn that, yeah, I can have such a leg and I can still walk. Mm -hmm. The other part is the social life now. Once you go through amputation as an adult, your friends will, some will walk away, some will remain, but you'll make new friends. Mm -hmm. The most hurting part is when friends walk away. And why does this happen? We used to go clubbing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yo, I can't club anymore. <laughs> you get like, yeah. yeah. So what I tell you is, we used to go share. We used to go to these uh, baby showers. We do short dresses. We do. Mm -hmm. Now you can't because now you have a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. What do I tell you? Create new circle of friends. Go on, interact with new people. Mm. You, I can I can friend you as long as you want. So when you're able to get new friends, yeah, because a human being is like a bird. At some mm. point they will fly. So it's it's normal. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love that for sure. Maybe to you, Brian. You know, with the fashion show that you are uh, planning, um, do you have enough models in it? And m probably if you can give us the number, if you have the actual numbers of how many models you have? Yes, um, we do have uh, models and we decided to have a variety uh, for the event. So we have kids, the mm. kids section. Oh. We have both men and women, so we wanted the gender parity uh, to be evenly distributed. And uh, ideally, it's a good event and uh, transformative life-changing mm -hmm. because uh, as uh, my colleagues have said we need to drive a message that it's possible and uh, it's not the end of life once you uh, go through a traumatic experience that leads to an amputation yeah. yes did you put a call for you know call to um for the models who are amputees to come forth or how did you go about getting um, the models on board? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we had a call for amputees mm -hmm. uh, to come uh, through and uh, not necessarily uh, to the uh, amputees that we have been able to uh, work with or rather in a way that we have served them mm -hmm. uh, before. But we wanted to make uh, a national face out of this event. So we went all out and about so that we can get representatives from all over the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. So every model coming on board, it's, uh, it's both male and female, right? It's Mr. and Ms. Yeah. All of them have um, a prosthetic. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 So uh, it's a day for <coughs> amputees to show and just enjoy themselves. Mm and bring everyone on board to support them. It's their day, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how we've planned it out. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of good things to come from it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I'm sure that inclusivity is just so, <laughs> so beautiful. You know, I'm sure it will touch something in them, you know, just to include them because I know that those who would love to be models but then you look at yourself and you kind of like pity yourself and think, okay, now I may never really get to achieve that dream of becoming a model. But you putting such an event, you know, yeah. just shows that they are also included. They can do whatever it is that they've always wanted to do. Yeah, and uh, it's actually tied to looking as at the patient, mm. at the amputee, holistically, such that even if you've treated them physically, you know, there's uh, emotions because, you know, there's a lot of depression um, after amputation and mm. many of us healthcare providers don't really focus on that. So 
At Prothea, we treat the patient holistically, um, have some psychosocial support, as Belinda has talked about, physiotherapy and, you know, training on how to use your prosthetic device, mm -hmm. and just try to bring all the healthcare practitioners to the workshop and, and basically have you, uh, have the patient receive all these services instead of you being sent to the prosthetist, then you're sent to the physiotherapist, mm. then you're sent to the psychotherapist. Yeah, so that's, that's what we're trying to inculcate. And even in the fashion show, we're really inviting healthcare providers to come and you know, just um, see what uh, the patient goes through even after uh, their intervention. Yes. Yeah. Melinda, is it comfortable? I mean, I've seen you walking. You just walk like kawaida. <laughs> yeah. You know, this one I'm asking specifically for someone who's back at home and probably they have someone who has a problem and maybe they may be looking into getting the prosthetic and they're wondering, is it comfortable? Will I be walking like everyone else? Yeah, yeah. For me, I can say mine is comfortable. Uh, with a prosthetic, you need to adjust. And uh, the other thing is we have different types of amputation. Like for me, I'm an above knee. Above knee is always not easy to adjust because now you need a joint. This mm. one now, here, yeah, this is a joint. Yeah, the camera, can you get so that? So this is a, a knee here. So it has to work like my other knee. So I have to learn how to control it with my brain. Mm -hmm. So there is a way I'm making steps. And uh, as I make step, I'm having it in my mind like, yeah, it's my prosthetic time to step. So I need to fold it then lift it to the next one. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you learn and that is what Dr. Ria said about training you on how to walk. So it's a, it's a process. You have to learn to walk with it. Then now uh, we have the Bologna amputees, uh, like the model who will just walk in. Mm -hmm. She's a Bologna amputee. So for them it's easier to adjust because now the knee is there. So the, the other part that is missing is just the downer part. Mm. So it's very easy to flex. Yeah. yeah, but it's very comfortable. Mine is comfortable. Yeah. yeah. I wake up every morning, I shower, I put on my leg. I, it's my normal life. Like, I think I got used to that point where mm -hmm. um, without my prosthetic, I'm not able to do most of the things I do. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm actually advocating for the insurance and HIF to be inclusive. Because if I wake up and my prosthetic is broken, I'm not able to do anything. That is health. You see, to them, mm -hmm. being sick and being admitted is health. Mm -hmm. But to me, my prosthetic is health to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's comfortable and very friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, maybe to you, Brian, are we having an entire fashion show like every other fashion show that we see? You know, we're used to the Miss Worlds, Miss Universe Kenya, Miss, you know, different um, Miss Earth. You know, are we, going to, are we expecting a similar kind of show? Absolutely. Inclusivity, uh, as the name suggests, mm -hmm. we want to include every individual, every human being on earth so that they feel they belong uh, mm -hmm. to the society. And uh, what you normally see uh, on Miss World Kenya or Miss Tourism, mm -hmm. Miss County, Miss Kenya, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all those pageantry, we are actually incorporating them and making them special, unique. Uh, with uh, persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So we encourage uh, different stakeholders who can join us in this journey so that we make these uh, people call it impossibilities into dream possibilities because mm -hmm. everything is possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, so mm -hmm. absolutely we intend to make it exclusive, we intend to make it special and unique. Yeah, so you've already put so much work into it absolutely. as it is. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So maybe to you, Doc, before you get to a point where you are amputating someone's limp, whether it's the leg or the hands, because also the hands yes. get amputated, yes, of you know, do you first like talk to these patients and let them know, okay, now we'll need to, because I can imagine I just yeah. went in, you know, and maybe I was in a coma and then I wake up and, you know, I've, I don't have one of my limbs and so on and so forth. So is it something, is it procedure to yeah. first speak to the patient? Yeah, so um, sometimes you do it as an emergency. Uh, if you're bleeding, you know, you're going into shock and things are looking dire, um, of course we do get consent, mm -hmm. uh, but if you're not able to give consent, we uh, talk to your closest uh, relative um, or um, um, the um, next person, basically, uh, like your wife, for example, or mm -hmm. uh, if your child, your parents, and uh, basically fill in the form, the consent form for us to amputate. Um, 
Now, this is very key, and mm -hmm. it's important for people to listen to this, because the decision to amputate can save your life. For example, in diabetic uh, feet, mm -hmm. uh, the foot gets infected, and uh, it really uh, uh, becomes a systemic infection, goes throughout the body, and this infection can affect any organ, and that's how it progresses. And literally, as you, when you amputate, then you are able to reverse all this effect with good antibiotics and proper care. Now, some people, and I have a long list in my head, mm. delay to make this decision. Others say, no, you're not going with my food. Yeah. And unfortunately, they pass on. It's traumatizing. I mean, yeah. I can imagine. They pass on. And what you're saying is so important because we need the psychotherapy. Yeah. We do have psychotherapy at uh, the place I work in. We also do a family conference where we bring everyone responsible for the patient's health on board and we just talk about the benefits of what this procedure is going to be. Uh, uh, to the patient mm. and uh, this is how uh, we go it and this is the standard the highest standard of care that uh, we should give I mean you just don't go in and say hey we're going yeah. to amputate you this uh, uh, this evening don't yeah. eat for six hours you know <laughs> yeah it shouldn't be like that yeah. so there's a process we take but of course in emergent uh, situations in life-saving situations uh, it's our responsibility to save life first so mm. once we get the consent we go in and do it. And uh, I just wanted to say about uh, some complications that may occur also with amputations. Uh, the most common being phantom limb pain. They mm. get some pain at the stump because the body still thinks that the limb that has been taken out is there. And uh, there are many ways of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. There's the medication that you can discuss with your doctor, physiotherapy, and most importantly, having an early prosthetic done. Some people take one, two years to have the prosthetic fitted. Can you imagine as early as six weeks after surgery, you can have an initial socket done mm. and as the stump changes the shape, then you can have another one and now a permanent one as because the stump does change shape. And that's an important message I want to bring out. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't really have to wait so long to have your prosthetic because the sooner you get up, uh, it manages all these complications that right. may occur. Okay. Yeah. On that note, we'll take a short break, but don't you go too far. When we come back, we'll be having an amputee model getting to model for us. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Before we took that break, we were talking to um, Prothea Kenya, you know, part of the people who are in this particular, um, it's an initiative? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this particular initiative and they have a fashion show lined up for us. That is the Mr. and Miss Prothea Amputee Kenya. Now, Belinda, do you model? Yes, I When do. did you start that? Journalist turned model. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's called a uh, change of uh, career or something mm -hmm. because uh, I realize most of the people with disability are not okay with modeling. You are called, there is a call for audition, they mm. don't show up. Mm. Why? Because the society has stigmatized them to a point they feel less important. And uh, so the idea was to bring these people to the limelight and tell them you can model, you can act. You see the acting that we normally see like a normal uh, able person sitting on a wheelchair. Mm. We want to do away with that. We need you to get a wheelchair person. Tell them, hey, we are doing this show, come fit in this because we need an, a person with disability. Don't act like a disabled person. Give a disabled person a chance to act mm. this space because they deserve it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to model. I'll just m not model as an amputee, but also a plus size. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the other thing that uh, I'm looking forward to is uh, because we have kids on board. Why are we having kids on board? We have kids who've gone through amputation and they don't have people to look up to. Mm -hmm. But if we get a kid and there is a kid that is going to get amputated, Dr. Nick can call this other kid who has gone through amputation and has interacted with the environment and, and is comfortable, will come tell this other kid, Sunona naeza cheza ball, ata wewe utache, utacheza. We need role models to ensure that these people don't go missing along the line. And the other part is we need uh, people to support this event. 
We need them to buy tickets. Please sponsor this uh, event. Make it visible. Ensure you, you send a coin, you send a, a shilling. Why? Because we are going to bring people to their normal state. We are going to get them an, another chance to work like any other person and earn a living. You don't need to beg on the street because you're an amputee. Mm. We can get your leg. After getting the leg, what's next? You can walk to those offices because most of us have papers, mm -hmm. but the device is the problem. Mm -hmm. I can't work because my boss thinks I'm not able to because of my condition. Yeah. But if I'm a, in a prosthetic, and the way you say it, if I walk in here and I don't tell you I have a prosthetic, will you be sure to know that I have a prosthetic? No, really. no maybe at some point, maybe I'll just tell you like, hey, I need to go for an assessment because my prosthetic has this and this issue. Maybe that is when you realize I'm a, an amputee. Mm -hmm. But without that, you, you'll be seeing me as an, a, an, a human being like any other. Don't see the disability. Mm -hmm. See Belinda first. You can see plus size if you want to, but yeah, that's don't you see, have allowed them. Yes, <laughs> but don't see the disability. Yeah. yeah. So see me as a human being first, then my disability will come later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Brian, what's the importance of having that support system, you know, for amputees? You know, I can only imagine how, you know, lonely it can get if you don't have that kind of support system. So what's the importance of having that support system? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the question. Uh, the importance of uh, the support system is to, first of all, transform you psychologically, mm. that uh, despite you being uh, persons with disability or you have been amputated before, you are accepted in society. Because the biggest problem we normally have uh, with amputation is stigma. Because uh, once you lose a leg, uh, you're considered, number one, uh, inefficiency. You're also considered as uh, somebody who is now dependable, completely dependable to family and to well-wishers. So if we have that uh, um, solution whereby there's that support, it brings in, uh, or rather it crops up, the idea of we are together in this. Uh, we are all holistic, we are all human beings. Mm. And it's pretty important because healing uh, starts at the mind. That's true. Yes, I cannot tell you that, okay, I'll give you a leg, uh, a prosthetic leg, and then just like that, you start walking. Mm. No, you have to first believe it in your mind. Your family has to believe it. Uh, the people close to you and also the society. And this is what we're doing, society to know and believe that uh, persons with disabilities and speci uh, specifically amputees, it's not the end of their lives once they've been amputated. They can do what any other person can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful message right there. I don't know if my director, we are ready to get uh, the model. As we do that, maybe um, um, to you, uh, Dr. Nick, yeah. is this something you're planning on doing, you know, on a regular, you know, the, the show? Oh, yes, of course. Um, now, <coughs> mm -hmm. the idea um, is to have, to make this an annual event, uh, make this, uh, a worldwide event uh, that can get that support and awareness uh, globally uh, because we need to focus um, on uh, this special group of people and provide them with the appropriate devices they need. Get that 79% who do not have these devices. Let's bring that number down to even 50%. Mm. And that way we'd have made a mark. This is the whole vision of this event. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now as I had promised earlier, we have an amputee model with us. Her name is Diana Nanjala and she will be strutting for us. So Diana, the floor is yours. Can do one more round. Beautiful. Beautiful. That is Diana Nanjala. And I'm sure even as you're watching Diana Strat, you can't really tell that she has a prosthetic. I mean, it took me a moment to realize, oh, okay. Yeah, I can see it. So, hi, Diana. How are you? I'm doing fine. 
Yeah. Have you always been a model? Yes. I've been modeling since 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're okay with sharing, when did you get amputated? Okay. Um, okay, I was living a normal life mm -hmm. through primary, secondary, and then college. Then last year, March, I got involved in a road accident. Um, I was in a border border and then a transit ran over my leg. Mm. So there's nothing else which could be done by the doctors unless being amputated. Mm -hmm. So I was amputated last year um, in the month of March. And then I got my prosthesis at around September. Mm -hmm. So I was able to walk in the same year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you, you were able to walk in the very same year. So you got amputated in, in March, yeah. as you mentioned, sure. and still in the same year you got your prosthetic and you were able yeah. to walk. Did that, did that make you feel better about yourself? Because I can imagine, you know, after you get amputated as a model, you know, that's the work you do. I'm sure maybe you kind of um, was questioning, you know, am I really going to be able to live my day-to-day -day life? Was that uh, what was going through your mind and after getting the leg, did you feel better? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, at the moment when I got the accident, um, it was a really tough moment for me. Like, it was so difficult to accept the fact that I've lost one of my leg and it's something that, like, my leg was my everything. Yeah. Like, I used it in modeling, it was like, everything it meant a lot to me mm -hmm. so when i lost it i felt um, i felt so weak mm. i felt like i couldn't continue modeling mm. like i was so i was so disappointed so stressed i had a lot of feelings at the moment when i was in hospital mm -hmm. but again my family and friends encouraged me through the journey mm -hmm. because it takes a lot of time to heal so my family encouraged me and then I also encouraged myself because the accident could, um, could have been worse. It could like, have taken your life. Yeah, it could have taken my life. Yeah. And so, you know, I couldn't be here today. But because it took my leg and I got another leg, so I'm able to walk again. Mm -hmm. And I was looking forward. I usually tell my friend that um, I was looking forward for uh, an amputee show because, you know, in this situation, like, it's difficult to come with those who have both legs. Mm -hmm. So I really wish to get like an opportunity to sh showcase my talent through uh, with people like me, like yeah. people who we, we, we have the same challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I heard about, about the, um, the, the prothea, about the fashion show, I was so glad. And yeah, I couldn't wait to apply for it and then yeah to showcase it. Mm -hmm. So you've had the prosthetic for more than a year now. Yes. Are you already used to it? Does it feel normal to you? Is it comfortable? Yeah, it's very comfortable and it's normal to me. Like, okay, I would say uh, the only challenge is that I, can, I can't run using this type of uh, prosthesis. Mm -hmm. Like this one is just for walking. Mm -hmm. Like even if I have to walk, to, I cannot walk, walk, walk like too fast. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, I'm tall so I can... I can you need to calculate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the strands are, mm -hmm. are longer, are longer yeah. yeah. But I cannot walk faster and I cannot run. So that is the only challenge. But I'm already used to it. Like um, before then, I think the first month when I was having this prosthesis, I was like, in the morning when I wake up, like some, sometimes I depart and miss how. So I took a kwa bed na anguka. But with time, Right now, I'm used to it. Like in the morning when I wake up, naiva, do my everything, and then journey, I remove it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So it is part of me. It is part of my life now. Yeah. And I'm proud of it. And I love that you've accepted that, and I love that you're proud of it, and still doing what you love. So it's so beautiful to see. What does this fashion show mean to you? Okay, this fashion show, it is very important to me because um, at least I'm... Um, I would feel like I, I have not lost it all. I still, I still have a chance mm -hmm. to showcase my talent because I treasure modeling. And the fact that I lost my leg, 
it's still in my heart. I still don't want to let it go mm -hmm. because it's still in my heart. So this fashion show, I think it will, because even right now I still struggle with self-esteem because when you just walk around, people will look at you like, these legs, they don't look alike. Like mm -hmm. this one is different, you know, people stare at you. Yeah. yeah, but so sometimes I really struggle with self-esteem. So this fashion show will, really um, encourage me and other amputees to know that they are no different from others yeah, and, they, and like they can do it yeah. and personally the modeling is what I, I love doing yeah. so You're this is everything it. to me yeah. yeah and I can't wait to be on that runway mm -hmm. you yeah. can do it and I'm really rooting for you actually I have a favorite already yeah. on the fashion show <laughs> my favorite is Diana and I really hope that you get to win and become Miss Amputee Kenya thank you so much all right all the best on that thank you okay back to you as we get to finish maybe uh, with this um, conversation you can let us know when the fashion show is happening where exactly it's happening if there are tickets to be bought where do they get the tickets who will go with that right. tickets right. yes, uh, so the fashion show will be happening on 4th of october mm -hmm. at uh, hyatt regency hotel uh in westlands and uh, we have tickets uh, on www.mtickets.com as well you can visit our uh, socials prothea kenya uh, a crossboard mm -hmm. and uh, you'll have also links to uh, the tickets but uh, uh, my clarion call is to all sponsors corporates uh, personalities this is individual personalities uh, to come on board mm -hmm. join us so that we are able to push this event to make it a success and to change lives because at the end of the day we want an even society mm -hmm. so this is my message to Kenya and to the rest of the world let's join hands let's come together and uh, do uh, this course and make it a success because uh, as my colleague had said earlier we want to make this an annual event and mm -hmm. every year we need to touch to touch a life and if we change a life then it makes for me uh, by the end of the day i've done my job and i've done a good part to this world all right so i welcome all of you uh, including you yourself I'll i want to see you to the come. event I'll definitely uh, come. let's come together and make this a dynamic change and also celebrate because mm. inclusivity is everything about life and it's the beauty about life sure yes. i'll allow you to give us your parting shot in the fewest of words beginning with you belinda uh, so personally what i can say is uh, my disability is my right to inclusion include me not because you feel like um, i'm supposed to be there because of a prosthetic no it is my right uh the second part is uh, you who is outside there have you ever thought about touching a life in a positive way then this is the platform what are you waiting for come on let us join hands and ensure that these people come and walk like any other person thank looking you looking forward to seeing you all there all right dr nick yeah, uh, for me, it's just uh, out to the public to just emphasize that an amputation is treatment in itself and it can be a life-saving procedure in itself. And whenever it happens, don't despair. There are solutions out here. Uh, there are solutions that could incorporate you back to society and uh, all hope is not lost. We are here for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Mr. and Miss Amputee Kenya. It is a first of its kind right here in the country. So it is only right that we go forth and support this beautiful initiative. It is fashion with a purpose. And I believe it is very necessary for us to have everyone included because, I mean, we're all people. It does not matter the kind of challenges that we come with. We are all people and humans uh, at the same time. My name is Vivian Degua. This is Entertainment thursday right here on good morning kenya and this is where we put a cup to it thank you so much to each and every one of you who has been tuned in and on behalf of the entire team that has made this a success we want to wish you a lovely day do enjoy the rest of your viewing goodbye